So one of the biggest mistakes I see wedding photographers making on their website is a lack of self-awareness. So what do I mean by this? I mean, there are things that every photographer should have on their website. Things like, where are you located? What's your first name? Let me see your face. What do you offer? And so I have some students' websites I'm gonna pull up, and I'm just gonna walk through some basics um, and some really key things that stand up to me in, on these websites that make me realize, I don't think they're aware that there's a hole here. I don't think they're aware that something is missing here. And so I want you to be able to watch through these examples and think to yourself, am I missing these key things as well? Okay, so let's dive into my computer and I'm gonna show you some examples. All right, so we're gonna look at Stuart imagery.com. Now I know that Stuart imagery belongs to Stephanie Stewart. And I know that because she's been a student for a very long time. I see her name on social media. I see it in our groups. I see, I see this person's name, but I'm going to act like I am first time to her site. Someone recommended her, or maybe I just found her on Google and I'm, I've landed on her website. So on her website, um, first thing that I love is I love a hero image like this. I love that it's a big, bold representation of her quality of work, but this is something interesting. And this is something that she may not be aware of. And other people I see all the time are not aware of. If you have a name of a business that is not your first name, I highly recommend using your name in your brand, especially if you are a photographer or doing a creative service because you are the value, not your work. That's a totally different video. But in this case, Stuart Imagery, I don't know her first name. So I know it's Stephanie because she's been a student, but if I'm just a regular person falling in love with her images, I'm going to look for this person's name. And I scroll down and I see, oh, she looks nice. But actually, let me, let me, um, I'm going to load it. So you see like first things first. Um, this is rotating. This is the first image I saw and it was of a camera in her hand. Um, and then I saw this and then I scrolled past to the rest of her site and I actually missed the opportunity to see more of her face. So what, like love this shot. That's a, that's a great branding photo. That's a great branding photo. I would start with this loading first so that people don't miss the opportunity to see the face. But also I'm looking through here and I'm looking for her name and I'm like, I don't really know what is her name. Let me go here and I'm scrolling. I'm learning about Disney World. I'm learning about marrying her best friend. I'm learning about her cute boys that have adorable names. Um, I'm even lear learning about the furry puppy named Fletcher, but I, I don't see her name. Maybe I'm missing it somewhere. That's a huge oversight and I don't blame her. Like if you are, pouring your heart into a website. And you've heard from educators like me and other people that you gotta let people in. You gotta let people get to know you. Like you gotta show your family and your loves, your passion, story of your life. She's doing all that so well, right? I feel like I'm getting a really great sense of like, also, Stephanie, your branding photos are just whoever did them. I think you say here, um, this is interesting. You, she credits, I can find the name of the person who took her branding photos before I can find her name on her site. I love her website, but it, I still haven't found her name. And, and that matters so much. So big overarching request would be like, let's use your name in your whole brand. Let's change the name because you have beautiful work. You have a beautiful family. You have a beautiful brand, but you're not getting the best bang for your buck because you're not using your name. And I can't even find your name on your website. So, so that's a major thing to be aware of. How easy is it for someone to connect with your face and your name at the same time, especially if you're not using your name as a part of your brand as a whole? All right, so what would I do to fix this? Super simple little tweak. Right here on her site, I would just start by saying, hi, exclamation mark, I'm Stephanie, period. That's it. It's literally going in the back end, just typing that into this header right here. Super simple fix, but a major, major thing that needs to be added to the website. Now, this is not the only example of ways that people are missing opportunities on their website. I'm gonna pull up another example. All right, so um, amandaericksondesign.com. I look at this site and I think to myself, okay, I know the name, so that's good. Um, but I also, it reminds me of my inspired design days uh, where I offered everything. I was interior decorator, I was a graphic designer, I was also a photographer. Um, so I get why this could be a part of her name and her brand. Um, but there's something that I noticed about this website. When it first loaded, it loaded with an image um, and I did not know that there was a menu bar up here at the top. So when this loaded, 
you only have a few seconds to really rein people in. So you want people to get lost in your website, they gotta know where to click. So when I first landed on this image, even though it's a beautiful image, I couldn't see the menu. That's an oversight. That's not something that is hard to fix. She literally just needs to start with a different image. And if you start with a different image, it, my recommendation honestly would be to add a full, like tro uh, totally opaque header at the top for the menu bar so that it's really easy to see the logo and to see the menu options. We want people to see where they can go and the, how to start their journey on the website. And if the menu is hidden, that's really hard to do. So hidden menus or a hidden, maybe a better explanation for this would be, some people are not aware that when people land on their website, they don't know where to go. It's not clear. How do I move from this main header photo? How do I scroll to learn more? Where's the menu? Like there was a fad a while ago where hidden menu bars were a thing and you had to click a big plus button to see a menu slide over. And that has shifted a little bit because I think it's hard and it doesn't encourage people staying on sites for a long period of time. So what's a quick, easy fix to this? Either adding a bar at the top to see the menu or starting with an image that allows for the menu bar and the options to be seen more readily. So if I was speaking to this from a design perspective, I think what I noticed was one, once I clicked gallery, this is what happened. I think this would be a more beneficial first impression than what Amanda has as her first homepage. One, because I can clearly see where I'm headed here. I can see how to navigate. Um, and also because look how, look at these, um, look at these images. Like, look at that. I don't want to get too far down the design train here, but when I look at like this collection of images, the logo doesn't match the images. Amanda, your work, looks like two steps ahead of where your logo is. Your logo looks like um, you're super fun. You're super like got a lot of good energy. It's a lot of fun colors, but your work looks like I'm a high end wedding photographer and your logo doesn't say that to me. And so my recommendation, if I was Amanda, I would make the simple tweak starting out, consider rebranding the logo, but something you could change right now is I would start with your website on this type of design. Starting with this, I think devalues you because as soon as I click gallery, when I clicked weddings right here, as soon as I click this, that's when I realize, oh, she's good. She's really good at this. This is beautiful. You even have a really good alternating view. I can tell you have an eye for design because you have a tight shot and then a pulled back shot with negative space and then a detail shot. You've, you have taken some strategy and put it into this portfolio gallery. But imagine if your logo had no color. Sorry, I'm going down the design train. I can't help it. But if your logo had no color and it was just a really clean, really great font usage, like really great combination of two fonts, um, imagine how much more high end that would look. I mean, I think that one tweak of taking the color out of your logo and changing to a opening homepage where it's easy to find the navigation, I think it makes you look $1,500 more valuable instantly. I get nervous sometimes. I get nervous that people are gonna hear this and be like, oh my gosh, she's trying to change my site. But honestly, I'm, I'm saying this stuff because your work is too good to not be aware of how these little changes could make you look so much more high end. Okay, the other thing though, quickly, the other thing is, I would really love to see your face because look how cute you are, right? You're so cute and the world needs to know how cute you are. So if it would be possible to get rid of this homepage, start with a homepage that looks more like this, I would even start more with like these, like this cluster of images are so consistent. This image here, even though it's beautiful, the tones of this and the tone of this are very different. So I would start here because that just looks amazing take the color out of your logo, possibly a redesign if you have the capacity, uh, and then consider, is there a way to add you into this element of the homepage? I'd love to see your face. Maybe that's a scroll down. Maybe it's even a pop-up. If you can add a plugin for a pop-up, let's get your face more visible more, more quickly so that people can not only fall in love with you, fall in love with your brand, but also fall in love with your face. All right, one more. I feel like I'm gonna butcher this name fonts photography. The reason I selected this is because this is more family focused and the other two were more wedding focused. The reason I love critiquing websites like this is because I see images that I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this photo. That is a beautiful photo. Like 
really makes you stop and look. I love it but it is completely devalued because there's too much going on. So something that I think people are, are lacking self-awareness about on their website is that they think that the more people can see at once, the more attractive they're gonna be as a photographer, the more impressive they're gonna be. Like, look at all these amazing photos. But the truth is, the more you have clutter on your site, the less impact you have visually. So when I look at this website, I'm seeing, sure, there's a lot of images, but the impact and the credit, the impact and the credibility that comes from being like, wow, she's a great photographer. I'm losing that because there's too much to look at at once. It's a simple design concept of simplifying the visual attraction so that your eye can really take in how great someone's piece of work is instead of trying to focus on a lot of things. So what my recommendation would be here, one, I'd love to see your face. Your face is so important. I did notice on this site, it's a little hard because I don't even have an option to like find you up here to find your face. I have home, book a session, family, product photography, headshots, first communion. First communion, I don't know how much you're getting paid to shoot first communions, but it is probably not as much as you're getting paid for other things. First communion does not deserve to be on the navigation bar. First communion, I don't even know if it deserves to be anywhere here. I'm not saying, it's not important, I'm just saying from a service perspective, your get to know me, you're like about the photographer, meet the photographer, meet me, about me, that needs to be right beside the home button here, not hidden in a drop down, okay? Because look how cute you are, Allison. I had to click though to find your name, so that's another, it's another example. It, we're making it hard for people to become attracted and trust you. If someone's gonna book you to shoot families, product photography, First communions, which is a special part of a child's life. They've got to trust you. So let's move this up. Let's move bio to right beside home. And I would not even call it bio. Bio, I feel like it's an outdated term. We need meet Allison. We need meet me, get to know me. But let's let's cut the bio. That's another self-awareness thing. A simple change of language can make you seem more inviting. So let's move that up here. And then on the home page, let's have a hero image where I can see the clarity of this photo full screen and then it fades in to the next super um, clear photo. Or you have a scrolling horizontal gallery. Whatever you want, I just want you to get the most impact and the most appreciation for your work. And I don't think you're getting that by having so many photos in people's faces at once. You're a talented photographer. So I want you to be able to raise prices, be able to draw in your ideal clients. And I think you'll be able to do that more if you allow them to get attached to you and allow people to see the fullness of a great image one at a time. There's so many things I could say, but having 45 minute YouTube video about website critiques probably isn't helpful. So if you have questions specifically about a certain part of a website, leave them below in the comments because I'd love to do this again and help other people. This is a really fun aspect of business to talk about. I don't think it's talked about enough in the photography world. So let's dive into this again in the future. But if you want to make sure you don't miss other episodes from our channel, like and subscribe. I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.